Welcome to this uh, video today, uh, which is on 22nd of January. Last week I was asking anyone who was watching uh, the forecast that I did, are there any topics you want covered in a video? And yeah, one that I was asked quite a bit about is um, the correlation of Forex pairs. And in relation to correlations, how they correlate with risk on and risk off and why they do so. Now, it's quite a topical subject at the moment because a lot of people are worried about a move um, yeah, from risk on to risk off, yeah, possible big correction in equities, which currencies perform the best, which perform the worst and why. So we're going to look at that in a moment. Also, I frequently get asked, yeah, do I think the US dollar is going to collapse? You see a little doom and gloom about that online. The answer is no. And the reason is the, because of the way it acts in terms of its reserve status within the global financial system, which we will also look at. So what we're going to do now is look at some currencies, their personalities and how they're likely to fare in both a risk on environment and of course if we move to risk off. So I'm just going to list out the pairs there and we'll just go through them. Right, so we've got uh, Forex correlation in terms of positive and negative correlation with risk. Now, what I'm going to do is, is just go through um, the currencies with uh, positive correlation with risk off, those with risk on how to trade the two groups, and also within the two groups. Now, in terms of positive correlation with risk off, there's four currencies that as a rule of thumb will gain on all others if yeah, we see nervousness in the global financial markets, a big sell off in let's say equities. Now, well, let's start with the um, US dollar first of all, it's the world's reserve currency. I see a lot of people saying, oh, yeah, it could collapse in the near future, it's not going to be a safe haven anymore. It's always going to be a safe haven because of its world's reserve currency status. Now, I'll come to that in a moment, but first of all, why does it gain? Uh, in terms of a move from risk. Well, obviously, the US has got the biggest, uh, most liquid bond market in the world. Money flows from equities into bonds, okay? But the other reason why it gains is because being the world's reserve currency, a lot of banks, even if they're not in the US, will grant loans against a US dollar base into other countries and currencies. So basically, the money will be taken from US dollars and then given into the other currency as a loan. Okay, Those loans start to dry up when you get a move uh, you know, to risk off. Furthermore, loans that are in another currency in another country are very often called back by the bank that has granted them. So that currency has to be converted back to US dollars. So you have to buy US dollars. That helps the dollar rise. And there are hundreds of trillions of dollars in loans like that around the world. So that is why um, the US dollar is unlikely to collapse. It's always going to be a safe haven. OK, now moving to the safe havens, I've graded them one to four. US dollar I put in second place, uh, the number one safe haven is the JPY. A lot of people are puzzled why the JPY would be a safe haven. Well, it hasn't got um, yeah, a great economy. It's got negative interest rates, but it's got two things going for it which make it uh, a safe haven and the world's number one. First is it's got the second largest bond market in the world. So money flows into bonds, that helps it. But the major factor is uh, Japanese are basically huge savers. Um, they have massive holdings of risk assets around the world. When you get a move from risk, they sell them up and bring them back to Japan. Okay, There are two other safe havens, minor ones, but they're always worth keeping an eye on in my view. Um, Swiss franc. Uh, Switzerland has always been a safe place to put your money in times of turmoil, so it, it's still a safe haven today. Uh, in recent years, the Singapore dollar has become, or Singapore has become the Switzerland of the East, politically stable and a safe place to put your money in times of turmoil. They're, they're minor safe havens, but I always think they're worth keeping an eye on. Come back to that in a moment. Now, in terms of currencies, they've got a positive correlation well, it, with risk on. I, they're probably going to rise as a rule of thumb over the risk of currencies. Yeah, if you've got optimism about the global economy and equity prices are firm, I put your own GBP, but that isn't such a strong correlation 
as um, the commodity currency, say the AUD, CAD and NZD. Commodity currencies are much more sensitive to risk as a general rule. Why? Uh, if global economy is doing well, commodity prices tend to be firm. Also, if you've got like strong stock markets, there's massive speculation in commodities. So, you know, all speculators are just buying commodities because it's optimism about the global economy. Um, if the global economy slows, obviously commodities fall. Um, if you get a sell-off in equities, that will always be accompanied by a sell-off in commodities as speculators run for cover. So AUD, CAD and NZD uh, of the majors, the ones to watch uh, against the risk of currencies. I've also listed out the emerging uh, currencies. Now, a lot of people don't bother looking at the emerging currencies because obviously you get slightly wider spreads in them. But that doesn't matter if you're a long term trend follower. You can very often get great opportunities in these currencies. They are, you know, as a group, the most vulnerable in terms of a move to risk off. Um, just list out a few of them. We're just going to go through them. Uh, Turkish Lira. Actually, that's already moving lower. Uh, a lot of political problems in Turkey. Uh, it'll sell off more if we move uh, to risk off. Mexican peso uh, obviously has fallen recently on you know, Trump's views about Mexico. Still has further to fall if we move to risk off. CNH offshore Chinese one. Uh, this one is a good downtrend, but it, this downtrend will really accelerate if we have a move uh, to risk off. Yeah, China very vulnerable to capital outflows. So that looks a really good long term trend to us. Russian ruble, uh, world's biggest commodity producing nation. OK, but the ruble has been fairly firm. Uh, that's because interest rates uh, are holding it up. And that that doesn't apply when you get to risk off, in my view. I think uh, the Russian ruble very vulnerable to a sell off. Uh, similar argument applies to South African rand. It's been firm, but a move, big move from risk. See the Tsar sell off. Um, emerging market currencies in Europe to keep your eye on. Polish, Lotti, Hungarian, Florent, again, vulnerable uh, if we get a move from risk. So, what you can do is you can just trade the risk off currencies against the risk on currencies. You know, our particular favourite, obviously, is the Japanese yen, obviously, the US dollar as well. Um, in terms of the Swiss franc and the Singapore dollar, I think they're, they're worth trading against the commodity currencies in particular. Why? Because very often you get less speculative interest in these two minor safe havens, which means they're not as spiky as the JPY and the USD. So I always think, uh, yeah, Swiss franc, Singapore dollar worth trading. And I think, you know, on the AUD, CAD and NZD, they're well worth a look. So yeah, you can just trade yeah, risk off currencies to risk on. Uh, or you can trade within the groups. So, for example, in terms of safe havens, you take the strongest one, JPY, and buy it on the other three, um, and the USD would be a buy on the Swiss and the Singapore, for example. We do the same uh, in the group with the positive correlation with risk on, yeah, for example, your own GBP, in my view, uh, buy them over um, the commodity currencies. So, yeah, we haven't really seen uh, a big move uh, away from risk, but I think that is coming. I just think if you keep the currency in, you know, personalities in mind and how they line up in the groups, uh, you can take advantage uh, of the correlations, um, you know, in terms of if we get a move uh, from risk on to risk off. So that's my little summary. Uh, of the forex correlation in, in, in terms of risk and uh, safe haven currencies. We'll come back after that uh, short overview there on how I see forex correlations in relation to being in a risk on environment and of course if we move to a risk off environment. Now in terms of the way the correlations you know, I've given them obviously any pair uh, can be affected by other events which change that background okay but in general terms, yeah, if we did have a big move uh, from risk on to risk off, I see the currencies broadly strengthening and weakening as we've looked at in the summary. Now, in terms of um, US dollar collapsing, uh, due to the way it acts as a reserve currency 
in the world. I just see that as so unlikely. And yeah, I've been hearing about the dollar is going to collapse for over 30 years. It hasn't. Yeah, the amount of loans that are granted against a US dollar base um, means you know, that in a move from risk, yeah, the US dollar is going to rise in my view. I just see the dollar as remaining a safe haven, although many people might disagree with me. Now, in terms of just knowing those correlations, they can help you, uh, you know, find some great uh, risk reward entries on your charts, in my view. Um, so yeah, I mean, correlations, they can obviously change, but those correlations I see being in place at the moment, I do think there is the potential for a move to risk off and just know those correlations can get us some you know, decent risk reward opportunities. Now, in relation to any other uh, subjects or topics people want you know, covered in videos, please feel free to write to me and I'll be happy uh, to do a video on any Forex related subject. So that is the video for today. Thank you very much for watching me.